The MCAT Podcast, session number 166. A collaboration between the medical school headquarters and Next Step Test Prep, the MCAT Podcast is here to make sure you have the information you need to succeed on your MCAT test day. We all know that the MCAT is one of the biggest hurdles you'll face as a pre-med, and we're here to give you the motivation and information that you need to know to help get you the score you deserve so you can one day call yourself a physician. Welcome to the MCAT Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray. And before we go any further, if you haven't started listening to the pre-med years, you're missing out. Way too often I talk to students who listen and crush the MCAT Podcast, or crush the MCAT because of the MCAT Podcast, but then struggle with their applications and writing their personal statement because they don't listen to the pre-med years. And that just doesn't make any sense to me. So if you don't listen to the pre-med years, stop making excuses like, oh, I I have a good advisor. I don't need any help. Go listen to the pre-med years right now, premedyears.com. Today, we have another great episode with Phil from Next Step Test Prep. I'll see you on the other side. Phil back for some more MCAT podcasts. Christmas came early today or this month. (laughs) as, As we're recording this this month for next month when the MCAT and the AAMC has announced that it is releasing a fourth scored exam. That is, uh, that's the, the, the dilemma I was going to say. The, the um, I can't even think of the right word. The, the, how disturbed pre-med students are that they are so mm-hmm. excited. Another test. Woo-hoo! Yes. Oh, it's been two years. This is great. It's <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I don't know. It's like, you know, your favorite artist just released a new album after a decade. <laughs> and I'm like super excited, right? I can't wait to go see this. I know. Um, I'm going to be maybe, at the record store Tuesday yeah, morning at yeah. 12 a.m. Yeah, we're all going to be outside the AAMC waiting in line and <laughs> cheering and like, you know, camped out. Cause, oh, I can't wait till it comes out. Yeah. Um, Why is this such a big deal? Because it's been a couple of years since the MCAT has released. Um, but there's three and, already, plus the unscored yeah. one. But the more stuff you see, yeah, the unscored one, which nobody likes to take because... You, it's like all this work and then there's no payoff at the end. And oh, the like, students oh, use the score was students use yeah. the conversion tables on SDN and Reddit. So, right. Yeah. I think if you just Google like AAMC sample test score converter, like next step that pops up like immediately, like here's one. Yeah. We have an Excel document. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, there are things out there, but it's really nice to kind of like get that like score kind of put out. Um, but, you know, it's exciting just because you have a bigger a bigger sample of what the AAMC writers are actually putting out. Now the actual MCAT is super variable, right? In terms of like, are you going to get a question on kidney? Maybe a question, maybe a passage, maybe nothing. And so, you know, if if I want to know how I'm going to do on the actual MCAT, what you need to do is you need to take multiple exams because then you're going to start to get like a bigger cross section of all the things that they could be asking about and the ways that they could ask about it. Um, there are some topics that the AAMC is like with their practice exams are notably like th- there's a couple of topics that they just haven't really asked about. And I'm like, ah, you know, like how does a student know how in depth to go with, for example, magnetism. Um, there's really not as much magnetism on those those practice tests as, you know, they do mention it as one of the topics that they do test. I actually, me and some of the other tutors have a betting pool going on what's going to be on the new test. This is how nerdy we are. Um, I'm like super excited. Like if, if there's magnetism on the next test, I'm going to get 50 bucks. And I'm like super <laughs> excited because I'm like, they have to ask a magnetism question because they haven't asked one in a long time. And so... Um, just the more tests you take, the better like representation you get. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is something I always advise students. Like if, if you do great on one exam, that doesn't mean you're going to do great on every exam. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, maybe this exam was really heavy on kidneys and really weak on magnetism. And so the actual test might be a little bit different. And so you need to take lots of exams to kind of get a better representation. And to to myself personally, I really feel like... Um, the exams are getting better that the AAMC is releasing. So, you know, all of them are good, but, uh, the AAMC scored test three is my favorite and then scored test two and then scored test one and then the sample test. And so I think that like, just as things go on, they've become better like score representations. And so I always encourage my students to go through them in order. Um, they're all good, 
like don't don't catch me off guard you know it's like misquote me and say like phil says this one's garbage but um but i really like score test three and i'm excited to see what score test four is gonna say what makes you prefer one test over another mm, okay so this this is getting into i gotta be real careful here um this is the opinion of phil hawkins mcat person not next step and affiliates or anything like that but um, as the MCAT changed in 2015, the, they de-emphasized a lot of areas. They de-emphasized organic chemistry, for example, and also some stuff with physics. Orgo was the biggest one mm. that they de-emphasized. But mostly they added a lot more material, but you actually have less Orgo questions now than you did on the MCAT, even though the new MCAT has like twice as many questions. And so when the new MCAT came out, they needed to put out a bunch of practice questions just so students would have an idea of what the exam was going to be like. And so that's where the sample test came out, the unscored sample test. And so they released that. And that is um, like they, they the reason that's unscored is because they didn't have data. Right. Like nobody had taken the new MCAT, so they didn't know how students were going to do. And so it's it was just unscored. In hindsight, like now at this point, they could probably go back and add scores to that that they haven't. And like, I really want to convince them to do it, but I don't think they're going to listen to me. But um, that's something that I think, you know, is, is different there. And so as the MCAT changed, and this, this is where Phil's opinion comes in, as the MCAT changed, they needed to release a bunch of materials. And they also had a bunch of leftover stuff that they weren't using anymore <laughs> because the MCAT changed. Mm. And so I think that the sample test and score test one, all of the questions are absolutely fine. But I think that there's a little bit more orgo on those exams in terms of the proportionality of what you would expect to see on the actual MCAT. Mm. And so I think that there's just a couple more orgo questions than you would expect to see. You'd expect to see somewhere around 11 questions on test day. And I think that they're a little bit higher. And that makes sense. Like if they're scrambling to build all new MCATs for 2015, you know, looking back into the past and like we have to release a sample test, like, oh, here's piles of stuff that we're not using. Let's just going to throw something together from those. And so, like I said, all of the questions themselves, each question individually is great, but the proportionality is something that I worry about a little bit. Um, and so if you're stronger in Orgo, generally I expect students to be doing a little bit better on the sample test and score test one. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not a huge thing. And to be honest, most normal humans would not notice this. Most, most MCAT takers wouldn't notice anything. But just kind of like going through with a fine tooth comb every once in a while, I see something and I'm like, hmm, where's the rest of this? <laughs> um, I feel like there's got to be more. There's also a passage in, I think, AAMC Full Length 2 that has like so few words in the passage. It's a chemistry passage. It's only got like 75 words. And the AAMC says they normally do like this many words in this range. And so that that passage is just like a little bit, I'm like, yeah, I feel like there, you need another paragraph here because it's like just one paragraph and an, a reaction. And um, and so I just feel like, yeah, I don't know if the AAMC would do that on the actual test, um, but that's, uh, you know, it's hard to predict what's going in, on in the minds of those crazy people. Yeah. Do you think that the practice tests that the AAMC puts out are old questions that aren't in rotation anymore? Or do you think they're like the what what is now the the factory stores for like Nike, where it's like, this is made just for the factory store. This is secondhand kind of content. Uh, I, I think now everything like the, the people who wrote the new MCAT, they're probably still writing the practice questions. I like that, that year, 2015, when they revamped everything. And like, I imagine that they had to like pull in some extra people and crew and like, maybe not in the, like the normal rotation of content creators that they have there. And so, yeah, that's another reason why maybe the sample test isn't scored is because they really don't want it to be scored is maybe they don't want students to, you know, try to take this to the bank of like, this is what I'm going to get. Uh, Okay. Interesting. So let's talk about with, with your discussion on what's, again, Phil's favorite tests mm -hmm. and, and how they're ordered. A lot of students are trying to figure out the the schedule working up to their test date. And again, we, we had Brian on a long time ago talking about his preferred order, but that was with the three tests and the unscored. Now we have mm -hmm. four tests. Is it just as, as easy as, okay, just throw that fourth one in a week before? What's, what's your ideal order of these practice tests as a student is working up to the real test date? So I really like just doing one, two, three, assumably four, you know, like what's coming next. Mm -hmm. um, but kind of talking about that calendar, 
you want to you want to have like a week between each one yep. where you take an exam, you spend a day or two reviewing it. That tells you some weak areas. In the next four or five days, you work on those weak areas and then you take another exam. And so that way you're constantly improving from one exam to the next. I, I always have a student that's like, I'm going on spring break. I'm going to take six exams. And I'm like, you're not going to get any better. Right. And so you just need to you know, make sure that you're growing from each test and like whatever you like using exams as diagnostic tools. Like they tell you like, hey, you need to work on data analysis and you need to review neuro and you need to look over like what's going on with the different psychologists like Freud and Carl Jung and Albert Bandura and all of these people. And so I like doing them, you know, one for each exam, one, two, three, four, the, uh, the unscored test. A lot of times I'll have a student that, um, you know, just wants to like get extra practice. And so I think that if you're going to take one, like you should see all of the AAMC exams at some point. Um, I think it's okay to take the sample test and kind of break that up. Like I'm just going to work on, I need to work on like bio data analysis. So I'm just going to do this sample bio section. Mm. And so if you're going to break one up into chunks for just like additional practice, I think the sample test works. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's kind of exciting. That's another thing now where it's just like a month. Um, of of exams, you know, if you're taking one a week, we got four exams. That's four weeks, and so that that fits really well. You know, kind of like thinking about what you're going to be doing a month before the exam, which also brings me to kind of another topic. This isn't really the you know the anything about the new MCAT, but it is kind of related to you know the day that the AAMC announced this. They also announced the schedule coming out of when the exams are coming up. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of noticed that there is no exam dates in February and there's only one Saturday in January that's available. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit unusual compared to what we've seen in the last years. And so if any of you guys are planning on taking the test on that Saturday in January, uh, think ahead and like be really aware because when we're recording this now, they haven't opened registration for it, but I could see a bull rush occurring on that that Saturday is all the students are trying to get that Saturday test date because they don't want to push their test back a couple of months. And like Saturdays are the only day that's good for them. Um, the AMC has gotten a lot better in 2015 when they changed to the new MCAT. They like you used to be able to take an MCAT in the morning and in the afternoon because they were way shorter. And so now that they've gone to like a full day test that effectively cut their number of seats in half. Mm -hmm. um, for the, how many people could take the exam. And so for a couple of years there, it was a little bit chaos as students are trying to desperately try to get a, you know, a booking at a certain center on a certain date. And I've had a lot of students that have had to travel in order to get to take an MCAT on a certain date. And that's not, not ideal. You don't want to have to fly to Arkansas for, you know, <laughs> like you go to some like town in Little Rock or Little Rock, which is a town, and go to Little Rock and you're unfamiliar with the town. You don't know where the testing center is and you have to deal with all of that on top of like, hey, I'm taking this MCAT today and this is a, a big deal. And so just kind of thinking about that that schedule as it comes out is uh, kind of interesting as well, trying to to balance that and make sure that that you can get the testing date you can. Um, they've got, like, like I said, they've gotten a lot better and there's been a lot less competition in the last couple of years, but I just, I just foresee that January Saturday becoming a little bit crazy as students try to book it. Yeah. I'm looking at the 2019 calendar and it looks like it was very similar. The one Saturday in January, nothing in February. Uh, no, no, they didn't reason, have I'm thinking there was one in February last year. Yeah. They, they didn't have any Saturdays in March. Um, last year, they, at least they have a Saturday in March this year. Uh, they have one Saturday, one Friday in March. Uh, so it's it's very interesting. And and it so the AAMC does a lot to piss me off uh, when it <laughs> when it comes to the MCATs. And I think at some point it gets very disingenuous to to the schedule of when students are applying to medical school and when the rolling admissions is and deadlines and all of this stuff. And and when the AAMC releases their MCAT schedule and it shows that the bulk of these tests are May, June, July, August, like students taking the test then are are getting behind the curve when it comes to submitting their applications early, getting their test score mm -hmm. back, submitting with a score so that they know if they should even apply, apply right? or not, right. especially the students coming from disadvantaged backgrounds, com coming from these backgrounds where they're scraping together every penny they have to be able to register for the test and, and take the test and, and submit an application. And, and it's just... 
it, it leaves a lot to be desired. So, yeah, not only that, but if you think about the, all the students that are taking the bulk are doing it in May and June, like most of these students are in school also. And so, you know, they've got a big chunk of time that they have to dedicate to finals. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the, they're spending so much time worried about finals or if you're, you know, taking your exam in March, like midterms, maybe overlapping with the day that you're trying to take the MCAT. Um, it's one of the reasons I really like the January test date is because mm-hmm. most students like don't have a lot going on for like in like the first or second or third week of January. And um, not only that, but, you know, they had all this time off over Christmas and, you know, like maybe they had finals, but it was like over a month ago hmm. um, by the time you get to that January test date. And so that makes it a little bit, you know, a little bit easier for students, like as they're trying to prep their schedule. Yeah. Um, so I wish that they had a lot of February test dates. I, I thought I really thought they did have them last year. Maybe it was the year before. My years are all blending together. Yeah. So, OK. And so just a final plug, register early seats do go fast, Mm -hmm. Uh, especially if you take the test when we recommend right no later than March or April. So you have your score back. You can have a have a nice informed decision of applying or or delaying your application a little bit to to retake the test. Yeah, Uh, you guys just got. Oh, man, you got to take it. And so you got to got to register early. Especially if you're listening to this now, then, then you have the time and the power to do this. Right. Yes. If you're if you're in the middle of March, all of a sudden, yeah, okay, I can't take it this month, <laughs> and I got this going on here. You got you guys you guys have a you're in a position now to prep for the future a little bit better. Yeah. So new MCAT practice test from the AAMC, potentially looking at adding it onto the end of of your uh, prep leading up to the MCAT. What what's the latest that someone should take that final full length before the MCAT? Like the day before, two days before, a week before? Uh, yeah, a minimum. Like I, I like to say the last week should be the easiest week of your prep period. Um, definitely not the day before. Definitely not the day before that. Or even the day before that, I wouldn't do it. Like maybe yeah. if your test is on Friday or Saturday, if you want to take it on Sunday, the like before, that's okay. But even then it's that it's starting to get kind of pushing it because you don't have a lot of time. Like I really like a student to take the exam, review it for a day or two, and then spend some time working on whatever that exam told them to work Mm -hmm. on. So if you take your test on Monday and then you review it Tuesday, Wednesday, and your test is on Friday, like you don't want to be like hitting hardcore studying on Thursday. The day before the test is the day you spend making sure that your brain is in optimal condition. All of you guys have had days where your brain is just kind of foggy. I'm a little bit off, right? Like I've forgotten my name. Like, who am I? Especially if I've been studying like a lot. And turns out the week before the test, students are studying a lot and they start to get a little bit burnt out. And so, so much of the MCAT is not just this rote memorization. It's like data analysis and application and trying to figure out what this passage is saying. What is this question even asking? And all of that is this like critical thinking, problem solving stuff. And if you're burnt out and fried, that hurts a lot. Um, And so you want to make sure that like the day before the test and the day before that, those should be the easiest day of your prep that you've done. No, no big passages that you're doing, like maybe looking over some equations or psych vocab or just the little things that don't really burn you out. Like, you know, reading a big passage on anthroposophy or something like that, that'll, that'll kind of burn you out pretty quickly. Um, and so the, those last two days before the test, you want to take really easy. Um, and so the, that means that the MCAT you take should be the last MCAT should be about a week before your actual exam. And students who are looking to hang out with you more for the MCAT course from Next Step Test Prep, those students get access to all of the AAMC material, correct? Yeah, yeah. Everything that the AAMC releases is is included in our stuff. Um, yeah, and so if you want to kind of talk about that, you know, we, we also do office hours that are specifically focused on talking through those exams. We do a lot more of those as the actual you know, test day approaches for a lot of students. So in January, I know we're going to be spending some time talking about each of these exams and any questions that students have going through them. All right. So there you have it. Another amazing episode with Phil. If you want to hang out with Phil more, go sign up for the MCAT course, which you can do so at nextsteptestprep.com. Now we have a lot of new codes and stuff for discounts on the podcast so i want you to listen up for for the mcat course i want you to use the coupon code mcat pod crs mcat pod crs all one word and that'll save you 50 dollars off 
the course. Again, you get to hang out with Phil four days a week in office hours. After watching tons of amazing content, you get all of the books, you get access to all of the AAMC material, everything that you need. The Next Step MCAT course is the best course that I have seen help students get the score they need. Again, nextsteptestprep.com. Use the promo code MCATPODCRS, M-C-A-T-P-O-D-C-R-S to save $50 off. Have a great week. We'll see you next time here on the MCAT Podcast. This is MedEd Media.